Hello everyone. In today's lecture we're going to look at move one of the introduction section in detail. And we'll look specifically at three steps that are within move one. All right, when we kind of looked at the overview of um, the introduction section, I mentioned that there were three moves, and let's talk about those briefly. Move one is what we'll discuss today, and it's called establishing a territory. And in the next two lectures, we'll discuss move two, identifying a niche, and move three, addressing the niche. Um, move one, which is, as I said, establishing a territory, is often the first move that appears in the introduction section. And we use it to gain our readers' attention, to um, help show them that what we're about to discuss is important and um, necessary and um, that they should want to look at the paper in more detail. Um, as I've said before, um, the steps, although we, or the moves, as, although we number them, um, do not necessarily occur in order. And I'll go through the steps here, but they can also occur in a different order than what I'm going to present to you. Um, so there are three steps within move one. Uh, the, f the first step we'll talk about today is claiming centrality. And this is where we state that um, what we're about to discuss is, um, is important, that other people have a lot of interest in it, um, it's timely um, and, and thus necessary. The second step we'll talk about is providing general background. And this is the place where um, you might um, talk about general information that people in your field um, would know. Um, and you just, re you know, are providing that sort of background information. And then the third step we'll talk about is called reviewing previous research. And this is where you might summarize or critique previous studies that have been done um, on your topic or in um, related areas. Okay, so um, next I'm going to go through each of the steps in turn. I'll give you examples of the steps and, and point out um, what are some of the, the key elements of each step. Then I'll give you some to practice. And then um, finally we'll wrap up and discuss what you need to do next. Okay, so the first step um, we're going to talk about is called claiming centrality. And one of the ways that you can claim centrality is by stressing how interesting your topic is. Of course, you think your topic's interesting. But this is the place where you would stress its interest to other people. Um, and that there's a degree of professional interest. So other people in your field are also interested. And the first example you can see um, the authors are saying there is much current interest among space physicists in the transport acceleration, um, etc. Everybody's interested in our topic. It's, it's very interesting. Um, you should read further. And our second example we have recently there has been much interest. So again, you get this um, sense that the authors are saying, we're not the only ones. Um, other people are interested in this too. Um, the next way we can do this is by indicating how important our topic is. It may not be something that everybody is currently um, or has been interested in, but it may be just a very crucial, critical thing. Um, and one way to do that is by using the word important or importance, as these two examples show. And we see the importance of body size to efficiency has led to um, certain things in animal science, or in fact, the importance of lateral gene transfer. Um, and so again, we see that the, the authors are suggesting that their work um, is going to expand on an area that's really important. Um, you don't have to use the word importance, although these two examples too do. There are other ways to also do that by claiming things are critical, um, crucial, uh, other sorts of synonyms for important. The third way that we can claim centrality by saying that our work is, is the center um, of the, the, the field around us is by showing how prominent our topic is. So that means that that our topic is timely, um, that people have been looking at it recently, um, that it's up and coming, it'll be the new uh, wave of research, something to indicate that it's, it's growing um, and becoming um, very, very timely. So we see in the first sentence that we have an example that says this study, the study of this topic is timely. Right? They're going to even use those terms. And the second example um, I've highlighted for you, recently a great deal of emphasis has been placed. Okay, so they're saying it may not have been important a little while ago, but right now people have, have said that this, this is very, um, 
the very crucial thing we should be looking at more carefully. So here are three different ways um, to claim centrality. And there are not black and white distinctions amongst these ways. So um, you can see how there are different kind of ways that you can claim centrality. Okay, our next step that we can talk about is called providing general background. And sentences that have this function um, are general statements about the knowledge within a particular field. This is knowledge that's shared by people in your field, not knowledge that you would need to provide the citation for, um, not things that you would need to necessarily explain, just general facts or information about your field. So here we have um, from accounting, this is some general information that accountants would know, or people doing research in accounting, and that wouldn't be contested um, in any particular way. But it's important to lay out some of these general facts so that the, auth the readers of your paper know where you're coming from. Um, so depending on your field, there might be certain key things that you just need to um, lay out before you move into more specific or contested areas. Okay, our third step is reviewing previous research. And in this step, um, there are a couple different ways, there are a couple different ways to uh, accomplish this step. Reviewing previous research is where you might summarize or critique uh, studies that have been conducted on your topic. Um, and this is the place where uh, you provide all those citations that you say, you know, I've read all of this work, um, here is its strengths, here are the weaknesses as you go. There are, a couple, there are two different ways to um, structure a sentence that's going to be pre um, reviewing previous research. The first is information prominent. And by that I mean that the information, um, the summary of the content is important and that the authors and the details of the specific study are, are less important. So in this sentence, you can see that the authors um, and the citation are kind of hidden away in parentheses. The important thing is the data, is the um, summary, and that's been laid out in the sentence. And the fact that it came from particular studies, they're just kind of put into parentheses. Um, so the focus is on the information. Um, and so you can see this example. There's, of course, other ways to structure citations, and how you structure citations will depend on your field as well as the journals that you're submitting to. So here's a second example. You can see um, that in this example, we have brackets and numbers. And in many of the natural sciences and engineering fields, um, citations are structured like this. Rather than using the author's name, they're listed in a numerical order at the end of your paper, and then are referred to by numbers in the text. Right, so here's another style. But again, it's information prominent. They're referring to the overall concepts and ideas of the studies, um, and it's not uh, particularly important uh, who the authors are. Contrast this with this next example here. Um, this is an example of author prominent citation. And author prominent has um, kind of a couple important things to pay attention to. The first is that the authors are the subjects of the sentence. Uh, Redner and Walker pointed out, okay, these people did something. Hathaway suggested. Hosmer gave an example. So in all three of these sentences, the authors are doing something. Um, they are, are kind of present in the sentence. They are, are part of what the paper is describing. And so the authors are part of the sentence, not tucked away in the parentheses. And um, they um, are, are the, the subjects of the sentence in, in many cases. They don't necessarily have to be at the very beginning of the sentence. But again, they, they are kind of more important and a bigger part of it. Many papers try to balance these two styles. Um, but each field and uh, your own professors and your own personal style will help kind of um, shape how much you use of information prominent and how much you use of author prominent. So that'll be something for you to explore when you um, look at your corpus yourself to see kind of what the balance of these two different citation styles um, is in your field. Okay, next I'm going to give you um, some examples um, and I'd like you to figure out which of the three steps that we've discussed um, 
best describes the function of the sentences we're going to look at. So as I go, um, feel free to stop your uh, video playback so you get time to really read the sentence and really think about what um, step it most, um, most closely belongs to. And then start it up again and I'll talk you through the answers. Okay, here's our first step. Go ahead and stop your video. All right, so you got a chance to read this one. Um, hopefully, right off the bat, you notice that it started with a citation. And um, that's the beginning of um, your first bit of trying to figure out what this, uh, the function of the sentence is. But it's not the end of your approach. So you identify that um, there's a citation right at the beginning. And then you need to read through the rest of the sentence. What is the sentence functioning as? And in this case, this sentence is functioning as a summary, a review of previous research. So Smith et al. demonstrated the feasibility of a lot of things by running a model. Okay, so you get the whole details of what Smith et al. did in, in their work. So it is a review of previous research. Um, and it's an author prominent style citation. So the author is there and the authors are, in this case authors, are the agent. They demonstrated uh, the feasibility. They're the subject of the sentence. Okay, here are two more. Go ahead and stop your, audio, your video. Okay, uh, let's look at these two. Um, in the first one here, we've got the importance of lateral gene transfer. And um, this is hopefully an indication that this is claiming centrality. Um, it's talking about how important it is to do this lateral gene transfer um, and how, how, how critical and important, how interesting it is. And here's our second example. There's considerable interest. Okay, So what we're about to discuss the authors are saying is really interesting and, and lots of people are interested in this topic. So both of these are examples of claiming uh, centrality. All right, here are two more examples. Okay, let's look at the first one together. Obesity and its associated risk factors can be treated or prevented through lifestyle changes that include diet and physical activity modifications. Now, there's nothing here that is talking about how important or interesting something is. We don't have any citations. Um, all we have is kind of a general statement, and that's exactly what this is. It's a general description of some information, the sort of information that we might all need to be reminded about if we're doing nutrition research, but not the sort of information that is um, contested or, or somehow debated. Um, in the field. So this is an example of the second step that we discussed, providing a general background. And um, it, it's just kind of a, a general statement. The second sentence um, is hopefully a bit easier to figure out. It's got lots and lots of references there at the end. And the sentence itself is a function of an uh, example of uh, a sentence that's functioning as reviewing previous research. This is the information prominent style of citation, where the um, citations are put into parentheses and kind of tucked away um, in the, the end of the sentence rather than um, featured as the, the subjects of the sentence. Okay, how did those go? I hope they went okay. Um, your next couple steps are to look at the home reading. So there's a reading over move one that for you to review, and that will help you um, consolidate the information we've talked about today, review any of the steps that were confusing for you. Um, then there's a knowledge quiz for you to be able to check your understanding. Are you figuring this out, and, and how is it going? And then finally, there's the corpus exploration tasks. And this is the place for you to um, try out this at home, to or, or, or in the lab, to, to try this out in your own narrow subfield. How does what I um, presented today translate into your field? Uh, what order are the steps um, introduced? How do they interact with each other? Um, in our next lecture, we'll discuss move two of the introduction section.